This is my house. Hi, I'm Bryce Tomlinson from New Depth Media. In today's day and age, all of us are going more portable. A lot of things are becoming more portable oriented, such as external hard drives like the Seagate free agent hard disk that I bought less than a year ago. Many of these things are made to be somewhat disposable, but there are ways that you can build or repair these gadgets yourself. In my case, my Seagate free agent hard drive was failing on me. The first step to repairing your hard drive is finding out what kind of hard drive it is. And to do that, you have to take it apart. Here's how. While some of these hard disks have screws on them, this particular one does not. This makes it sort of challenging to figure out how to get it apart, but in the end, it makes it pretty simple. One thing that you might like to have handy for these sorts of things is something called a stick. These are made popular by Mac users who like to take their Macs apart. And in this case, the, uh, the Seagate free agent is a little stubborn, but with a little bit of trying, you can get your stick to kind of go in the edges and work the edges open. And as you do so, do it really carefully and you'll find that you can pull the whole top open. On the Seagate free agent drives, open it from the logo side because that's the side that's actually going to let you have access to the actual hard drive. On the inside of it, it has this self-adhesive kind of sticky tape stuff that's piled up around the edges. And that's really all that's holding the Seagate free agent closed. The next thing you do is you wanna somehow figure out how this comes out. Sometimes they'll be screwed in. In this case, the Seagate free agent is not screwed into its case. So you can simply flip it out and you'll see that there are little rubber grommets right here on the corners of the hard drive. These little rubber grommets allow it to be cushioned inside the case. This is one of the features that I really like about the Seagate free agent drives is that they do their best to really protect the hard drive. This little LED panel is just clipped in. It'll just pop right out. On mine, it has a little bit of sticky grounding tape on it and you pull that aside and now your case is ready to be set aside. It's time to find out what kind of hard drive this is. Now a lot of times it'll say right on the label whether it's a SATA drive or parallel ATA or IDE. In this case I want to find out for sure since I've got to take the whole thing apart I might as well do it this way anyway. These little rubber grommets on here just pop right off. Make sure you put them someplace safe. And then of course you've got four screws that are holding it into its chassis. Again, put your screws in a safe place. The hard drive simply lifts out. And if you grab the bottom part where the plug is and you pull from the opposite direction very carefully, the hard drive should come right out. On the bottom side of this, it has these plastic tabs. Some of them have pins rather than these plastic tabs. This particular drive is a SATA drive or serial ATA. There are other kinds of hard drives that you may have. This particular one is a Mac store and it's an IDE drive which is indicated by this uh, bus of pins back here. It's a 40 pin connector and this is a three and a half inch. And here are the two side by side. This is what you usually see in your laptop computers and nowadays in the external hard drives. And this is what you usually see in your desktop computers and sometimes in some of the early external hard disks. This is a two and a half inch IDE drive. You'll notice it's the same size, looks pretty much the same. Both of them are Seagates, but you can see that one has an obvious row of pins on it and the other one has these tabs on it. So you can see side by side what they look like. Now this is a notebook version of an IDE. It came out of a notebook computer. The two of these are a little different. This is an IDE three and a half inch and this is an IDE two and a half inch. The pins are closer together on the two and a half inch. They're not compatible with the same connectors. Now one of the things you might want to do is determine if your hard drive is still good when you pull it out. One way you can do that 
is with an adapter cable. You can buy these from your local electronics store sometimes, or you can find them on eBay. This particular model is a Coolmax. I like the Coolmax model because it allows me to hook up a three and a half inch or five and a quarter inch IDE drive. So this would allow me to use like a CD-ROM drive if I wanted to hook it up to it. It also has the two and a half inch IDE hookup. It also has the SATA or serial ATA for the modern day uh, desktop and laptop serial ATA drives. I used this connector to test out this hard drive so I verified that the hard drive itself was actually good and it was the controller portion that was failing me. All I needed to do was get a new enclosure. You would think that I would just be able to get like a little replacement controller for this but most of these are custom made to fit inside the enclosure that it comes in. What I had to do was buy another enclosure. Depending on which kind of drive you have, if you have a two and a half inch IDE or two and a half inch SATA or a three and a half inch IDE. Any of those enclosures, you can look for them specifically on places like eBay or Amazon. This particular one was $5.45 shipped to my house. There's a little clip on this end. Just use your fingernail or your stick to pry it open. And once you get it open, you'll see that it's very simple. There's simply a controller in here and just the enclosure. There are no rubber grommets in this, which is kind of disappointing. This means that it doesn't protect the hard drive as well from jarring or shock. But it's very simple to use. You simply line up the little SATA connector with the SATA connector that's inside. And it'll be very much the same if you're using IDE or if you're using SATA. You just line it up just right and push it together. Once you're done with that, you can simply close up the case. Make sure you line up the USB port with the outside hole and then you close the entire enclosure on your hard drive. Once you're done with that, you simply plug it in and then plug it into your computer and you're ready to go. These enclosures usually come with their own USB cable. You wanna make sure that you don't get one that comes with just a regular USB connector on both ends. That's not very practical because you won't be able to use this cable for anything else other than that hard drive. You want to find one that comes with a cable that is one of these universal type of USB cables that plug into cell phones and cameras and things. And this will make it so that you can use this cable in a number of applications and not just your hard drive. This particular cable also has two USB plugs on the other end. This one is for data. You'll notice that the cable is slightly thicker on that side. This one is for your power. So it's able to provide extra power to the hard drive to make sure that it's able to spin up and do all the things that hard drives have to do because hard drives are kind of demanding for power. Some of the enclosures for different types of drives will also require that you use screws to fasten it into the case but this is a really easy operation. It usually only takes about 10 minutes. Thanks for watching.